Hi, today we are going to learn how to secure OpenShift installation running publicly in the internet like AWS. Our previous OpenShift installation accepts any user during login. We will fix that here so it only accepts registered users locally. First, we need to create a AWS EC2 instance that will host our OpenShift installation. To do it, we go to the dashboard of AWS and we click EC2. From EC2, we'll launch a new instance. I recommend using Red Hat. Then the size of the instance will be maybe 2 CPUs and 8 gig memory. Then we accept the default parameters. Let's make the volume or the hard disk to have a size of 40 gig. And we configure the security groups. We will expose 8443, the SSH port, and maybe some HTTP port. Okay. This port should accept traffic anywhere. By the way, I'm not gonna going to discuss AWS here because it is a separate topic. You can learn it by going to AWS website. Okay, we are now configuring the security groups. Security groups are like firewall settings in AWS. Okay, we are telling that this port should accept traffic anywhere for demonstration purposes. Now that we have the security group, we'll create it and launch the EC2 instance. It will tell us to either use an existing key pair or download a new one. In this case, I've decided to create a new key pair and download it. You have to keep this key pair so that you can still access your EC2 instance or your server instance in AWS. Once you've lost this, you can no longer access your instance in AWS, so you better keep it. Okay, now I've launched the EC2 that will serve as our OpenShift server, and you can see it's under pending status. I name it for now OpenShift to give it a description or we can label it. The next thing is that I would like to create a public IP. That public IP will be used by the OpenShift server so that we can access it outside the internet and we can keep the IP address even though the server had reboot. Think of the public IP as a static IP for our server. Now I'm associating that IP that I had just allocated to the OpenShift server that we had created. Now it's associated, I'll go back to the instances and see the status of the server. It's still under the initializing status. And let's give a bit to have it completed. Now it's complete. I would like to connect via SSH by clicking the connect. And I can see the command needed to connect via SSH. I'll copy and paste that SSH command and go to my terminal command line now in my command line i need first to chmod 400 the pem file that i get the openshift.pem otherwise you cannot connect to aws if you don't do that now using the ssh connect command that we had copied a while ago we should be able to ssh to our instance we click yes to accept the key now we're in. Next is we needed to install and configure Docker in AWS. It will be different because this time it's Red Hat. To install Docker in Red Hat, we needed to add some repositories in the server. To do it, we issue the following command. Again, don't worry, I'll give this in the documentation. After adding the repository, it's time to install Docker. 
we do it by issuing the command sudo space yum space install space docker space minus y. Using this command, it will download the docker from the repository that we had just added. Once downloaded, the installation will prompt us to install it. And if we click yes, it will continue the installation. It will run for quite some time because the download size is quite big. Now that the Docker installation is complete, you can see it below, it's completed, it's time to run Docker. We can run Docker using the same command we learned previously. That is sudo space systemctl space start space docker. Now Docker is running. After installing Docker, this time it's time to download and install OpenShift. We'll use 3.9 in this version. For us to download the source of OpenShift 3.9, we need to install wget. After installing wget, we can now download the OpenShift origin. Again, we are using that OpenShift 3.9. We download it in GitHub. Don't worry, I'll give the link at the documentation or article of this lecture. Remember, we are using OpenShift 3.9. And it's downloading. It will take some time to download it because it's quite big. After downloading OpenShift, after completing the download of OpenShift installer from GitHub, we have to unzip the file because it's in .tar.gz format. To do it, we issue the command tar space minus x vf space the name of the file name. Once we got it unzipped, we need to configure Docker insecure registry. To do it, we edit the slash etc slash sysconfig slash docker file. On this file, we will append in the options the insecure options. Let's go at the end of the argument. And we append the new flags, that is, minus minus, insecure, dash registry, and an IP block, that is the IP block of Docker. In order for our changes to take effect, we need to restart Docker. After restarting Docker, we can now test our unsecured OpenShift installation. To run the OpenShift 3.9 that we had downloaded, go inside the directory that we had just unzipped. And from there, we can execute the sudo oc cluster up. Notice that we had added two arguments. That's the routing suffix and then the public hostname. The routing suffix is the IP address of your server in AWS and the public hostname is the public DNS of your server in AWS. That will allow us to tell OpenShift how to access the web console. Now it's starting, it will take some time to download some images from the Docker Hub as well as it will take some time to start some of the services. Once OpenShift has been started, you can see the web console link in the console. You can cut and paste that link to access the web console or the dashboard of OpenShift. If we copy that and open a browser, since we are still running an unsecured installation, notice that we can still log in using any password that we have not previously created. So if we log in using a username named any user and put just about any password, when we click login, we can still log in to the console. Alright. See that even though we have no username anonymous user accepted, we manage to log in. 
For now, let's log out and continue the class by doing a secure OpenShift HT passwd configuration. This means that a user that has not been defined locally cannot access OpenShift. To install HT passwd, we need to install a package named httpd-tools. After installing the package, we can use that package named httpasswd to add users that can access or allowed to access OpenShift Web Console. To do it, we run the command sudo space httpasswd and the name of the user that we are allowing to access OpenShift. We give some username and password. After that, we have to do one more thing. We need to edit the configuration file of OpenShift in order to point or tell OpenShift to use the list of users and refer to the list of users that are allowed to access the web console. To do it, we open the file name master and it's the master-config.yaml. Now, if we go in the identity provider section, we have to update this configuration. Right now, this configuration says it is accepting any user that logs into the web console. So we need to add or replace this configuration such that it will always challenge the user with the right privileges. This user should have been added in the htpasswd file. So to do it, we need to add new configuration file. Don't worry about this configuration file that I had just added. I gave this in the, the documentation or article of this lecture so that you can simply cut and paste it and replace your current identity provider. Okay? Now that we had replaced identity provider, it's time to save it. And we relaunch or run OpenShift once again. To run OpenShift, I need to go inside the installation directory. Now that I'm in the in installation directory, I issued the same command. However, this time I added new flag, meaning minus minus use minus existing minus config equals true. This means that it will read the new configuration file that we had just added, which is the master dash config that yaml without that flag the changes wouldn't take effect now give it a minute to launch the openshift server now that our server is running you can see the link of the web console we'll copy and paste this link to a browser so that we can access it now in this section it's time to test our secured openshift installation to do it, we open a browser, whether Chrome or Firefox or Safari, anything that you wanted. So here, we access the link or the browser using that link. As you can see now, we are trying to log in as anonymous and we are not allowed. However, if we use the user that we had registered in HT passwd, the user is secured user. And we try to log in with that user. We should be able to log in. And there we go. We had successfully logged in to the console. Alright. I'll log this out. But before we go. It's a good practice that we stop the OpenShift installation in AWS. So that it will not incur some cost. Because we've used a pretty much large server in this lecture. To turn off OpenShift, we issue the following command sudo space dot oc space cluster space down. Finally, after turning OpenShift in our server, we have to stop the AWS instance that we have created. To do it, select the instance and click action and choose instance stop. With that, the AWS EC2 instance will now stop and will not incur additional charges. Okay, that's it for today's lecture and thank you very much for joining me. I'll see you again soon.